exactly what you want to see. Let's run this puppy in. Score a touchdown and tie this game. Life, run for your life, touchdown on one play. Worked on this in practice. Touchdown. It's up to Kelvin Benjamin. This is all you, buddy. Kelvin Benjamin for a touchdown. Oh, he toasted his man. Holmes toasted his man. Spin move. Oh! Oh! What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video here on the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Notre Dame All-American Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14 College Football Revamped. Every time I say that intro, it's a mouthful because it is. I want to say everything the way that it should be. So it's NCAA Football 14 College Football Revamped. That's what it is. And I'm going to say it like that. And we are back here with another episode. It is season three, game number five? Game number five, I'm pretty sure. Or six, or seven. How many games is it? It might be seven. <laughs> I'm not sure. We're four and two, so I think it's seven. So obviously I just had to look at the, the thing and I, I'd tell what game it was. I, I guess I'm just an idiot, okay? Let me live, okay? We are here. We're playing Purdue at home in front of Touchdown Jesus, which is an ideal situation. You want to be in front of Touchdown Jesus at any time. Purdue's not really the greatest threat to us. It's not like Ohio State or Texas, which are the two losses that we have on our schedule this season. Unfortunately, both of those games were on the road, so... What can you say? I mean, those are two of the top three teams in the country. They're both really, really good. We're currently ranked number six in the country after both of those losses because we've had some pretty impressive wins as well. Although we've played some pretty bad Big Ten teams so far. It hasn't really been much of a challenge, I guess you could say. Todd Gurley's played really, really well. Mariota has played well at times. He's also struggled at times. And the defense, the defense, has played unbelievable at times. They have been, like, the best defense in the country in some moments. And then other moments, it's been like Swiss cheese. So, you gotta pick and choose your battles. You gotta pick and choose what you want to win and what you want to look at the positives for. So, with all that being said, let's go take a look at, hopefully, what could be future Heisman winner Todd Gurley and the rest of this Notre Dame team. Here we are, week seven. I should have known that it was it was game number seven because it says week seven right up there. So I should have known. I, I should have known. But we won't talk about that. We're going up against two and two Purdue at home, at our home, in front of Touchdown Jesus, which is good. If we take a look at the top 25 standings, we are, like I said, number six in the country. But the two teams that we have lost to are one and two, Ohio State and Texas, both of the teams that have beaten us in the past in this season. We are the first team with a loss in the top 10, and we are the first team with two losses in the top 10. That's how much they value us as, as a team, as a, as a program, because we have two losses. We should really be down here in this area, like in the, in the top 15, not in the top 10. But with two losses, we're ahead of Oregon, who's undefeated. And maybe that's because Oregon hasn't played anybody yet. That's a, that's a good possibility, but we are ahead of them, so I'll take that. Also ahead of us is Kansas State, UCLA, and Florida, along with Texas and Ohio State. So we know what our job is. We can't obviously go to the national championship this season unless every team loses two games. It's more than likely we're going to go to another game, which is probably going to be the, the Rose Bowl, I would guess. But it's not it's not the end of the world, I guess. And here is the, the worst tragedy than being ranked number six in the country is Todd Gurley ranked third in the Heisman voting right now behind Dontre Wilson and Brett Hundley. Now, we know how good Dontre Wilson is because we played against Ohio State this season, and he destroyed us. And so did Cardell Jones. He played really, really well against us. But to be behind the defending Heisman winner, Brett Hundley, when he shouldn't even have had it in the first place, it should have been Todd Gurley's award last season, and now he might not even get it this year? It's highway robbery. Absolute highway robbery that Todd Gurley is not the defending Heisman Trophy winner and first place in the Heisman race right now. Absolute highway robbery because he is second 
in rushing yards. I think James Robinson must have had a, a bye week or something because, or maybe he got hurt. I don't know what happened, but we, we had a really good game and we got really close to number one in the rushing yards. So maybe we can pass James Robinson today. We are obviously going to run our offense through Todd Gurley like we usually do, and we'll see what happens. It's against Purdue, so I'm not super worried, but who knows? Anything can happen. This could be a trap game. This could very easily be a trap game. So make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and let's go play Purdue against Touchdown Jesus. Hi everybody, Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. An in-state battle between Notre Dame and Purdue. The Fighting Irish and the Boilermakers are on the field, finishing up pregame warm-up. The intensity starting to rise, a lot at stake. Not only bragging rights, there's also the battle for the Shillelagh Trophy. Thanks for joining us here on the NCAA College Football pregame show. Now let's send it out to Brad and Kirk for all the action. We'll see you at the half. got a dandy for you today. It's the annual battle between two Indiana institutions, Notre Dame and Purdue. Let's head down to the coin toss now. It's brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coca-Cola taste and zero calories. Enjoy everything. We go ladies and gentlemen football is once again live here in notre dame in front of touchdown jesus but it is raining in south bend indiana it's gonna be a sloppy one today trey wayne's almost had a a kick return in the first play of the game that would have been pretty wild let's get since it is a little bit of a sloppy one it's a little bit of a sloppy one today let's get the running game going early and often here as Todd Gurley will take this up for four yards that's a, a good start four yards a carry is nothing to to scoff at so let's keep it going let's see what we can do with this Purdue we gotta we gotta test the waters see what Purdue's good at see what they're not so good at and it seems like they're right now they're pretty decent at stopping the run so it's third down we could go with read option here. That might be an option. An option for read option. Let's go with levels. Levels might be the better option here. Or the better choice. How many times can I say option in one sentence? Uh, I'm just going to run. I know I have a couple guys that are open. But you know how Marcus Mariota can be with, with throwing on the run sometimes. And I don't want to risk anything. So I might as well just take the easy yards. Get the first down. And just move on. You, you never know what's going to happen. I don't want to risk anything. I don't want to risk like a, a horrible pass and then we're on fourth down for no reason when I easily could have had a, a first down running the ball. And that's what I did. So Todd Gurley getting up there again. Five yards. So he's gotten four yards, two yards, five yards. Oh, I thought they were going to tell us. He was saying something about setting records along the way. I didn't know if we had any records that were going to be broken today in today's game. That'd be pretty cool. Todd Gurley with a great run. Offensive line, amazing blocking there. Ooh, there's read option. Let's go with some read option here. Get him off target here. I don't know how good this Purdue team is going to be. I, don't, I should have taken a look and see what their losses were. I'm not sure what their losses are on the season. So far, Marcus Mariota got hit hard on that one. I was thinking about sliding, but then I thought maybe I could swerve him, and I, I couldn't swerve him. <laughs> I could not swerve him, but we will continue to go with uh, Todd Gurley here. The offensive line seems to do very well at blocking these Purdue defensive linemen, and Todd Gurley is getting right up there. Six more yards added on. 
I think I think we could be able to beat Todd. We could beat the Purdue Boilermakers without ever throwing a pass. <laughs> that would be a sight to see, wouldn't it? I mean, look at this run from Todd Gurley, and he gets a touchdown on. I wasn't sure if the knee was going to come down or not, but Todd Gurley gets a rushing touchdown there. That's a good way to start in the rain. We have yet to throw the football. We have not had a pass at all of this game so far in that first drive. And we'll see what happens with the the uh, Boilermaker offense. I don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how good they are. They're four or they're two and two. We're four and two. They're two and two. Where's my uh, meter? There it is. They're two and two. I should have checked to see what their losses were. I should have checked to see what their wins were to see to kind of like judge how good they could be. But it's early season. You can never really judge early season. You have to wait till later in the year. We know our defense is good, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. Who's their quarterback? Is it uh, Danny Etling? That, yeah, it is Danny Etling. That was the only Purdue quarterback I could think of, if we're being honest. Thank you, Landon Collins. Robert Gregory almost took that to the for a touchdown on the first play. But luckily, Landon Collins dove and tripped him. Thank you so much, Landon Collins, for saving us embarrassment there on one play touchdown. We'll see what Danny Etling's got. I don't know if he's got the skills to pay the bills. And Gregory's going to get shut down on that one. So he's not going to get the same kind of open lanes that he had in that first drive. Or that first play. We might force Danny Etling to throw the ball. And who knows, maybe Danny Etling's not a good passer. Former Patriot Danny Etling, by the way. Got drafted. Uh, actually, was he drafted? I don't know if he was. He might have been undrafted free agent by the Patriots. There's Jalen Smith, one of the best tacklers in the, in the nation. Jalen Smith with the wrap-up for four yards. It's third and five. That uh, second down, or that first down where we tackled him for no gain, that was, uh, that was pretty big. Getting the crowd pumped up. It's a sloppy, rainy, miserable day here in South Bend, Indiana, but the Notre Dame faithful are here, and Ben Bulware will shut him down for a sack. That's how you do that. Danny Etling, very indecisive, couldn't decide who he wanted to throw to, where he wanted to go with the football, and he will go nowhere as he gets sacked. And the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in front of the shadow of touchdown Jesus will get the ball back, up 7 nothing. Pump me this ball right back to me. There it is, Trey Waynes cut outside. Trey's got some space, but he's wrapped up by the ankles. Shoelace tackle at its finest there. And now do we continue to run this football? I think we do. I think we do. I mean, we've got a minute and 11 to go in the first quarter. They couldn't, they never proved that they could stop the run game. So we might as well continue to do it until they prove that they can stop it. I mean, three yards isn't technically stopping it. And plus we're just running the clock down. I, I'd be fine winning seven nothing if we're being really honest. I wouldn't hate winning seven nothing. I know that may not be the most entertaining game for you guys to watch, but a win is a win is a win is a win. Marcus Mariota even getting into the rushing game. Okay. Okay, Marcus. Marcus Mariota. Let's go with a little bit of halfback dive. We'll send him right up the middle. This seemed to work on the last drive, so I would I would guess it would work again here. I wouldn't think that they'd be able to stop it. And they can't. Todd Gurley right up the middle of the field. Absolutely no shot they stop that. We'll run it back and do it again. Run it back. Do it again. Let's, uh, can we get the play? Thank you. Finally. I don't know why that takes so long to, to call sometimes. Come on, Mariota. You're calling the same exact play. I know you're trying to throw off the defense, but you're calling the same exact play. There's no need for that. Four yards. Sometimes no huddle can be kind of annoying. Nine carries, 57 yards, and a touchdown already for Todd Gurley. I'm going to run some read option again. Then we're going to see if they follow Mariota. They are going to follow Mariota. Okay. So we'll give it to Gurley. He gets up to the uh, 39, third and three. That's the end of the first quarter. Oh, we're fighting for something. Look at the little trophy there. I didn't realize that. I, I should have known this was a rivalry game. I didn't even realize that we were fighting for a trophy. Well, we got to win the trophy now. I was going to go for the win anyway, obviously, but now we got to win it for the trophy. Cut this inside. Gurley, did he get the first down? They give him the first down. That was a very generous call. I wasn't sure if they were going to give me that call or not. 
Thank you, Todd. Thank you for that. And now, possibly, we could be having our first pass of this entire game. Now, I'm not guaranteeing it because I could just scramble, which I might do. I might have to do. Uh, I wanted to throw that. I really did because I had I had Michael Thomas on in inside leverage, and I could have thrown that, but I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. I didn't want to risk anything. I'm playing real cautious with Marcus Mariota because of his history of having very inaccurate passes. We know what he can do with inaccuracy. Three carrier, three yards again. It seems like they're starting to stop Todd Gurley in terms of, of lessening the blow, giving him less yardage to go. So he's getting about consistent three yards per carry now. And Michael Thomas is going at the middle of the field. I really like this. And I really like this. Michael Thomas, the first pass of the day for Mariota is not a touchdown. How is that not a touchdown? Oh my God. How is that not a, a touchdown for Michael Thomas there? Explain this to me. Oh, that should have been. He should have rolled into the end zone. I don't know how that wasn't a touchdown. We'll give this to Todd Gurley. He'll easily walk in. And that is a two-score lead for Notre Dame. I don't know who's going to be able to break Todd Gurley's record for most touchdowns in a career. He's been here for, what, three seasons? He's been here for three seasons, and he's got a ton of touchdowns. Michigan is up 10, or up 7 nothing over Maryland. They're ranked 10 in the country. We'll see what this Notre Dame offense or defense can do against Purdue on the second drive. Danny Etling really did nothing on that first drive. It was all the running back, Gregory, and he really didn't even do much except for a 118-yard run. That's all he did. Let's see what Danny Etling can do on this next drive. Four minutes to go in the half. They get the ball to start the second half, so that is a plus for them. But Joey Bosa shuts down Robert Gregory with a gain of nothing on that one. Danny Etling's going to have to let this fly at one point. He had an option on third down to do that on the last drive, and he just held it too long. He's going to have to be a little bit more in, uh, decisive here as Jalen Smith gets in the backfield and shuts that down. What did I tell you? He's one of the best tacklers in the country. And that is another gain of nothing for Robert Gregory. And now they put themselves behind the eight ball here with a third down and long. They're going to have to stop running the ball on first and second down if they want to have success against this Notre Dame offense and or Notre Dame defense. There they go. They finally throw it. And for some reason, I missed the tackle there. But Landon Collins is able to push him out of bounds. Yeah, that one's on me. That one's on me. I'll take the blame for that. I, uh, I went for the big hit stick, and I wasn't close enough to get the big hit stick, so I completely whiffed. And now they will go with a run play. Collins was able to spin him around and wrap him up after a gain of four. Oh, they get one passing play for like 60 yards, and they think that they're the best team in the country. Good job. <sighs> Whatever. You completed one pass. That's all you did. You still can't beat us. You still can't run the football consistently. Third and three. It's back to third and three. Are they going to let this one fly again? I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised that they throw this ball. I wouldn't be surprised if they ran this ball either, the way that they've been running their offense. They are going to throw, and Danny Etling chooses his guy, D'Angelo Yancey, for a touchdown. Okay. All right. Maybe Danny Etling's got a little bit more pizzazz than I would have first thought. They score a touchdown to bring this within seven. And two minutes to go. They get the ball at half like we talked about. But there's two minutes left. Two, we can score pretty quickly. I've been known to score in less than 30 seconds. So, I mean, we, we, can, we can do some damage with two minutes. Especially if Trey Waynes gives us great starting field position like that. That's really good starting field position. And now let's see if we can cook. We're going to start with a read option play. Because they're going to think that we're going to want to pass. 
And then they're going to leave the lanes open. Nope, they're going to watch Marcus Mariota there. So we'll just give this to Todd Gurley. He'll get 10, 11 yards, and, and we'll be fine with that because we get the first down, so the clock stops momentarily. And now they're going to think run, so we're going to go pass, and Will Fuller's going to be open here. That's just how things work. Or Marcus Mariota. Ah, Will Fuller is open. I don't like throwing on the run with Marcus Mariota. We know how bad he can be at times, but he can also be pretty accurate too. It's just like a, it's a very hit or miss thing with Todd Ger or with Marcus Mariota. I'm a little hesitant to do it. I could have had, I could have had it there. I, I probably would have been successful if I would have threw that. But Todd Gurley getting about eight yards, seven yards on that one. Don't hate that at all. Do not hate that at all. And we got to try and run this clock down. We have all three of our timeouts, so we don't have to worry too much. But we got to try and run this clock down as much as possible because they get the ball at half. We don't want to give them an opportunity to score before the end of this half and at the start of the next half. That's a throw. And see, you know, that was probably on me a little bit because I, I spun off my back foot and threw it. But still, you know what I'm talking about in terms of how inconsistent Marcus Mariota can be. I will take a little bit of the blame, mostly because I thought Todd Gurley was going to run to the other side, but he didn't. He ran to the... Oh my god, Will Fuller got absolutely blown away on that hit. Is that not a targeting call? I mean, seriously. He got obliterated. We're going to go for this. You know we don't punt the football on the channel. We're not going to kick a field goal with Will Lutz. I don't know what to do. I'm going to lob this one in. It's going to be an incomplete pass. And... <sighs> That's not what was supposed to happen. That is not what was supposed to happen. And now with the, the momentum of scoring their last drive and now stopping us on defense, Danny Etling in this Purdue offense might be ready and raring to go for an, a tie this game and then they get the ball at half then the momentum is completely changed if that happens we cannot under any circumstances let them score any points really a field goal a touchdown we cannot let them do anything that would be the worst thing in the world but joey bosa will get the sack it's third and 16. joey bosa comes up clutch with a huge sack and they don't use any of their timeout they're gonna let this accelerated clock go under 30 seconds now Third and 16, that was absolutely massive, getting that sack with Joey Bosa. They're going to run this ball with Robert Gregory. They're going to get some decent stuff. Please tackle him. Please tackle him. Please tackle him. Kevin Byard. Ah, oh, they're going to get a field goal. you got to be kidding me. Or may, They might score a touchdown. Gregory's hurt, though. I can't believe he did that. That is so stupid that he was able to get such a big gain there. I don't know who took a wrong angle, but somebody did. Joey Bosa can't get the sack. Sheldon Day gets the sack. That's massive. Sheldon Day with the sack. Six seconds left. They're going to get a field goal. Uh, I didn't really want them to get any points, but a field goal, I guess, is not the worst thing in the world. That's so unfortunate, man. They shouldn't even have been in that spot. We had him third and 16 after the sack with Bosa, and then Robert Gregory goes off for like a 70-yard carry. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm going to let this go down, and we're going to see what can happen with Mariota letting it fly. Maybe we get some sort of lucky lucky break? I don't know. We, we never really know. Are they going to be ready for it is the question. We're going to go four verticals. Todd Gurley's going to be the other vertical. We'll see what happens here. Are they going to be ready for it? Let it fly. Mar oh my God, Marcus. And Evans didn't even catch it. Marcus Mariota didn't even throw that 20 yards. Ugh. 14 to 10. This has been a very upsetting second quarter. We start the second quarter up by four points. Oh, but I'm not feeling good about it. It's not a comfortable four points, that's for sure. This team has been a thorn in my side in the first half. 
they're so inconsistent. Like, they, they look like they're really bad at times, and then they also look like they're world beaters at times. It's, it's so inconsistent, I can't keep up with it. Our defense can't figure out what the real what the reality is. Like Randy Ge Gregory will break off like a 70 yard run on one play, and then on the next play he'll get stopped for a, a no gain. Like I can't I can't figure it out. I don't know what re what's real and what's not with this offense. So strange. But there's Randy Gregory or Randy Gregory. There's Robert Gregory. Did I say Randy Gregory earlier? I can't remember. I probably did, if we're being honest. Robert Gregory has 10 carries for 110 yards. That's not what's supposed to happen. He's supposed to have 10 carries for 10 yards. Josh Perry, I got to the quarterback. Come on. I even timed it and everything. I don't know how he got that ball away. It doesn't make much sense. I totally sacked Danny Etling there. But whatever, I guess I didn't. We'll go back on first down. And there's Josh Perry. I knew I'd get my sack. Josh Perry with the sack. It's second down and 17. Good job, Perry. We push him back farther. Let's see if we can get another sack here. Can we go back to back with Perry? That'd be pretty cool. I would appreciate that. I'm going to try it. Oh, I got so close. Pick that. Yeah, Kavari Russell. Kavari, the senior. You got to pick that off. You are far too, too old to have hands of bricks, hands of stone. You got to pick that off, Kavari. We cannot be doing this. This isn't freshman year. Oh, that was a weird pass. I don't know where he was throwing that. Who the? I don't know who the intended receiver was. That's so annoying. Kavari could have had a pick six, and yet he just bricks it off his hands. Unbelievable. I thought we were past that with the seniors. I mean, I mean, I, I'm, I'm used to it from the young guys, but not the seniors. Oh, Trey Waynes catches that while he's moving and gets a decent amount of yards. Ten yards, I'll take it. Can we please score here, Mariota? Please? Can you not suck? Like you usually do? Oh, that's a quarterback draw. That's not what I want to do. I'm going to switch that to a sweep. Oh, that's O.J. Howard. We're going to switch this to a passing play because O.J. Howard's in the backfield for some reason. I don't know why. Get that. Oh, and I just did the exact same thing that Notre Dame, or that Purdue just did. I threw it into a crossing lane and it hit off the first guy, the closer guy. Of course I did. Mariota is one for six, by the way, with that incomplete pass. The only pass he has is that first pass he completed. And there's another one. Luckily, it's Amari Cooper, who's got some pretty good hands, and he gets 13 yards on that one. Let's get back to the run game. <laughs> let's, let's not go too far away from the run game. The run game is what's gotten us this lead and what's gotten us ahead in this game. So let's go back to it. Oh, reliable. I... I held the button down and it didn't work. Unbelievable. I had an open lane with, with Derrick Henry, or with uh, Todd Gurley too. But it, I guess it didn't register that I held the button down. Unfortunate. Can Mariota hit this? Kind of. Not as accurate as I would have liked, but it's a catch for 11 yards. I'll take it. Good job, Dalton Schultz. Good job, Schultz. We get that pass. Three for eight for Mariota. 52 yards. We'll see if we can get this first down. It's four yards. Can Todd Gurley get four yards? He can get three. It's fourth and one. What do we do on fourth and one? Obviously, we, we go for it because we don't put the football on this channel. But what do we do with it? We're 0 for 1 on fourth down. We've got to complete this. I might just run it straight up. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever was going to pass that. I think I was just automatically going to run it no matter what, just to guarantee getting the first down. Good job, Mariota. You did a good thing. Now let's uh, see if we can get more yards. 
the, the strong toss, the tosses never work. The pitches never work. The tosses never work. I never really call those plays just because I don't think that they are very successful most of the time. And Gurley's able to stay up on his feet. I don't know how he stayed up on his feet, but he did. He was able to get seven yards out of that. I'll take it. I don't know how he, how he did it. I thought he was going to go down on the ground for sure. We really need to score. We're using a lot of clock, by the way, which is good. But we really need to score. Oh, Todd Gurley right up the middle of the field. But it's a holding call. It's coming back. Oh, it's clipping. Clipping from Michael Thomas. And, of course, one of our best runs, if not the best run of the night. And it's coming back because of clipping. Unreal. Come on, Michael Thomas. There was no need for that. And now I can't I can't do anything. Now the, the next play is, is a loss of one because of course it is. That makes perfect sense. Unreal. 18 carries, 94 yards, two touchdowns for Gurley. Is that good enough to put him back into Heisman contention? I don't know. You ask me. The defense got some pressure and forced a bad pass. Come on, guys. Why do we suck at blocking? Give me a little bit of time, and I can throw a good ball. But if you don't give me enough time, I'm going to get hit like that. I mean, what is this blocking? What are we doing here? And Mariota has a noodle arm. I don't know. What was that blocking? Did you see that? There was, like, nobody that was blocking at all. My offensive line was, like, non-existent. It was, it was like they weren't even there. I had O.J. Howard open, but Marcus Mariota's noodle arm couldn't get it there. Unbelievable. It's a tale of two halves. That's what it is. Reggie Raglan with the sack, though. Thank God for this defense, man. Was that four sacks, five sacks? I don't even know how many it is. This defense has been the saving grace for us in this game. Let's keep it going, boys. They're going to give this to Gregory. Jalen Smith, you got to wrap him up, my guy. You got to wrap him up. You cannot let him break an arm tackle like that. Unreal. You cannot let him do that. There goes the third quarter. We're entering the fourth quarter up by four still. Nobody has scored this second half so far. I hope that I score another touchdown here. Although I'd be content with winning 14 to 10. Just as long as we as we're on the winning side of things. Can I get past him? Bosa get the sack. Russell! Yes! He heard me! He heard me! Kavari Russell! He got rid of those brick hands and he gets those soft, luscious hands. Beautiful interception. Thank you, Kavari. Thank you so much. You did the do the darn thing. Thank you, Kavari Russell, for picking that ball off. That is the momentum shift that we needed. You could start to feel this entire stadium could start to feel the little the levers start to, to switch in the momentum. And that interception completely just reversed it back. And now it's all here with the Fighting Irish. All we gotta do is run this clock down. That's all we gotta do. In the immortal words of Pat McAfee, we gotta run this clock down. Let's run this clock down. Give this to Gurley again. Let him cut up the field or get tackled immediately. Third and three. We have not been good on third downs. We have not been good on fourth downs. I don't know what we're going to do. Are we going to go with a halfback slam, maybe? And then get into field goal range and make it a touchdown lead? I don't like that. So I want to get a first down here. Gurley! Got it! Thank you! Woo! Thank you, Todd for getting that first down. That was massive. Absolutely massive. 29 rushes, 10 passes, and only, I think, 
three of them have been completed. Maybe four of them have been completed. Oh, girlie has got some space. Cut up the field. Second down and in inches for Todd. We need to get him a third touchdown. If we get him a third touchdown, he's got over 100 yards. I think that's going to be pretty safe in terms of his standing in the Heisman race. Maybe it'll even bump him up above uh, the the Florida quarter or the Florida running back. But also, Marcus Mariota is getting down and dirty in the rain here. We're gonna just gonna we're gonna blame our sloppy passing on the rain. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna blame it on the rain. We'll say the, the, the rain was just too much. The ball was slippery. Mariota couldn't get a grip on it. That's what we'll blame as Todd Gurley continues to pound the rock up the field. We are now second down and four with three minutes to go in the game. Up by four. Hopefully up by ten pretty soon. That's what we're trying to do. Give this to Gurley again. Let him. Oh, that's Henry. Derrick Henry fighting. Derrick Henry scores the touchdown. Okay. I didn't see that coming. I thought I was going to be Gurley again. But I'll, I'll take Derrick Henry for a touchdown. Big time carry. He's happy about it. And we go up by 10. And now by 11. If Lutz can put it through, he will. 11 point lead with 249 to go. And this Purdue offense has been so inconsistent. They have proven that they can score on us. They've proven that they can get big plays, but they rely heavily on those big plays. If they can't get those massive chunks of yards per play, then they really can't do much against this defense. Especially because their offensive line sucks at blocking. They can't stop us from getting a sack. We've gotten, what, four or five sacks in this game? Something like that. Let's see if we can add another one. Come on, boys. Oh, nope. That's going to be not a catch. Not a catch there. Five for nine, 80 yards. And he only has those 80 yards because the one pass was like a 60-yard completion. He should only have about 15, 20 yards passing, but whatever. Second down and 10. They're going to motion a man from left to right. Danny Etling making some last second adjustments. And Anthrop will be brought down by Kavari Russell. That interception was massive, man. <laughs> Kavari Russell came up big. If only he would have picked off the other one earlier in the game, that would have been a pick six. I'm just happy he got one of them. If he would have dropped that one too, oh man, I might have had to move him down the rotation or mount, down the depth chart a little bit if he would have dropped both of those. Raglan. Oh, Kavari, you could have had a second one. He wasn't in the right position for it, but he, he had a possibility of getting it. There was a slight chance. Under two minutes now in the final quarter of the game. It is first down and 10. First and ten. Danny Etling sweating, trying to figure out what he's going to do, how to beat this Notre Dame defense. He motions a man again. And he's going to pass this. He's going to get it to Yancey, the man who has the touchdown. What's the flag? Roughing the passer on Bosa? Because I was Bosa. It is on Bosa. I didn't even think I got to the quarterback. I, I just dove because I dove. Well, that's stupid. That is really stupid. I didn't even think I touched him. And look at where they're at now. I didn't even realize I, I touched him. Whatever, man. That's crazy. I didn't even think that I did anything. But I guess I did. Bosa with another sack! This time, it's not a flag. He touches him for real this time. He gets another sack. That's two for Bosa now. And that's what, like six or seven for the team? I don't even know. I'm not even 100% sure how many it is. I know we got a lot of them. Kavari can't pick that off. Nobody can catch it. It's third and 17. We are having a sack of Palooza in South Bend, Indiana. Touchdown, Jesus would be proud. Defense. 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 Sheldon Day gets another sack. This Purdue offensive line is in shambles. 
Sheldon Day with two. Bosa with two. Perry with one. Bullware with one, I'm pretty sure. Raglan has two, I think, or one. He Somebody has multiple. I don't know what's going on. It's a screen. On fourth and 24, it's a screen. And they're going nowhere. We are going to win against Purdue. I guess it was a it was a nice effort to to throw a screen on fourth down in 24. Maybe would have caught me off guard. I don't know. Cut this outside. It's Todd Gurley. He's got a little bit of space. Come on, Todd. Gets the first down. 12 yards on the carry. Good job, Todd. I kind of wanted Gurley to get that third touchdown, but I guess it doesn't matter as long as we get the touchdown. He's already got two. And it was cool how Derrick Henry just like bulldozed everybody to get it. Under a minute to go now in the game. This one's going to be over. It's been a sloppy one. Oh, they're actually using timeouts. Down by 11 with a minute to go. Under a minute to go, you're using your timeouts. Whatever. There is another great tackle, and there's their final timeout. It's third and seven. I guess we could kick a field goal, go up by 14, and then they have to score two touchdowns in less than a minute. Just to tie, that wouldn't even be to win. They would just have to be able to tie it. If they want to go down that route, I'm, I'm not going to stop them. Fourth and inches. I'll kick the field goal with, with uh, Will Lutz. I'll kick the field goal because I haven't kicked many field goals with Will Lutz, so we'll see what we can do here. I'll line it up. There's wind coming back on my face. This should go in. I'm going to let the clock go down as, as much as possible. We might as well give a little love to Will Lutz. He's a senior, so he's not got many more field goals left in his, his leg here in college, so we'll see what we can do. Boom! Will Lutz up, and ooh, okay, that was a little risky. That was a little risky, but it goes through. 24 to 10. This one's was over before the field goal, but now it's really over. 13 seconds left. There's no theoretical way they can score two touchdowns to tie this game in nine seconds. It's just not physically possible. But we'll see what they got. I, I really I really wanted to give them the ball back so I could see if I can get another sack. It's all about trying to get another sack. Maybe we can do it here with Reggie Raglan. Yes, we can! Reggie Raglan will end the game with a sack. That's how you do it. We got to check the stats after this game and see how many sacks we got because we got a lot. And it's a big-time W for the boys. It was a struggle there for a second in that second quarter and into the third quarter. A little bit of a struggle, but we got the job done. That interception by Kavari Russell was absolutely massive. What a momentum change. Stats on the day, Mariota was absolute trash. 3 of 10, 52 yards, so inaccurate, just a noodle arm, nothing he could do was good. But Todd Gurley was the saving grace on offense. 27 carries, 142 yards, and two touchdowns. Absolutely incredible. And Mariota did good on the ground. So what he didn't do well on the air, he made up on the ground. Nine carries, 81 yards, and then Derrick Henry had the one, uh, one rush for uh, eight yards and a touchdown. We didn't really do much receiving, only three catches. And then if we go to the def defensive side of things, this is where it gets good. Let's take a look at how many sacks we had. So we had two with Raglan. He had the one to end the game. Bosa had two. That's four. Six. Sheldon Day had two. Then seven. Perry had one. Eight. Bulware had one. So we had eight sacks in one game. Absolutely incredible. And then the momentum change with Kavari Russell's interception. Absolutely incredible. But eight sacks in a single game is unbelievable. I can't believe it. I'm so happy, and I'm happy that we won the game, most importantly. So we go to 5-2 and two and maybe get back in the top five. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Here we are, week number nine, and we had a bye week. That's why we're week number nine, not week number eight. So we had a bye week. We're still the sixth, the ranked sixth in the country. We're playing Wisconsin, who fell out of the, the top 25. They were 16 when I simulated to this week. But it looks like they lost last week when we had a bye week. So 
that is good for us in terms of we're not playing another ranked team. Todd Gurley does secure himself the two spot in the Heisen race behind Brett Hundley. It's going to be a battle against us and Brett Hundley, really. None of these other guys, I guess Keenan Reynolds might have a shot at it, but it's really just a battle between us two. We've been the favorites for two seasons now. Brett Hundley stole it from us last season. Hopefully we can steal it from him this year. We're 5-2, still ranked number 6, going up against Wisconsin at Wisconsin next episode. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.